All right, well, I didn't get to check it out, but Chad went ahead and he uh, evened out all of our seams so it was as flat as possible using uh, coarse grit and fine grit. So I didn't explain it too much, but you should be able to see these screws right there. Those are the wafer headed screws. We just recessed those down. So those are on the ribs themselves. So the paneling screwed down. Then we'll glue the pylon on top. Should adhere just fine. I think with that, we're ready to put a roof on. Chalk line down the middle won't matter too much because uh, there's going to be a lot of overhang on both sides. We're gonna, and this roof gets cut flush, so we don't have to tuck it into anything on the side there. Oh. So, I think we just start cleaning up and put our roof down. All right, it's all laid out. Now we just have to glue it down, Chad. That's the easy part. Is it? No, hard part. Oh, it's only the dangerous part. But tell you what, with no support underneath right here, it's Soft. feeling really good. Roll back up, start gluing, huh? I'm not gonna record that because you know we've seen that too many times. Don't worry, that goes away. Got the 440 on here now. Hey, okay. I think so. Whee! Rocket here. Do over this. All good? Yeah. Oh yeah, ship it down the road now. Yes. Perfect. Those are wings. Those are airplane wings. And they're called winglets. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they get Better fuel company. A couple hundred grand extra for that. Well, there it is. It's on now. Like that. Just like that. We just have to trim the uh, the sides and then uh, trim the front and the back. But um, overall, it's going okay. Feels really strong now, though. That's the good news. You guys can't see anything, it's just white. That pesky sun. Good job, Chad. Good job, James. Now I know what you guys are gonna ask me. You're gonna say, if you did all this, why didn't you just go ahead and put a rubber or a TPO roof on? It would have worked, because we didn't have to worry about radiuses on this side at all. The only problem is that even though on the back it would pretty much work the material would make that uh, radius okay the front roof is the uh, is also the front cap mate so we would have to engineer some sort of radius to do a back support on the material and it would not be durable because this is going to be taking the brunt of everything and I don't feel like I want to own that. So this keeps it factory, helps with resale value, and makes it a lot more durable to hit things and not get torn. And also, don't forget, the owner wanted Phylon. They didn't want rubber. They didn't want TPO. So they had a say in this too. All right, so I got a new car. Just kidding. I still have a Prius. Get my uh, router some router bits. All right, let's go trim a roof. But, I mean, it would have been nice to have that car. At least for a day. All right, so we got a, a trim router. We got the side cleaned up now. We should be able to route the side really easily. Obviously, I run out of a uh, guide right back here. So I'll probably just in the router at this point and then trim the rest by hand. We'll have to fold the edge over and make a mark where we want to cut it. Draw a line and cut all the way across. Have to do that on the front too. But after that, we're putting this thing back together. All right, so I'm just gonna use a uh, flush cut bit there. I think uh, that blue one's brand new. So I'm gonna use that. There we go. Nice in. Let's get this thing.
So, I mean, you don't need a CNC router when you have a Chad controlled router. Cool. You, look at this, I even have a, gan a gantry too. It's just a really big CNC router. You're yeah. the mechanical arm. I am the mechanical arm. So, my Chad uh, rolls up that for future use. I have to get cleaned off. Getting what you doing there, Chad? in our spot what's our spot our sewer stack oh yeah that's right you marked all those on the side because you were smart because somehow our rear right our roof got thrown away very good that's our stack six and a half inches from the outer edge then what's that this truss oh i forgot we made marks on the trusses too man glad you're here i already forgot all right so here's the big plan we put putty tape on our molding on the side, and then underneath right here, we're going to be using uh, bunch of silicone. silicone underneath, and then new flex on top. Waterproof. Yes, because new flex or silicone, it will stick to silicone. There's no reason to waste new flex underneath. There it is, something high tech, 100% silicone. This is white, so we'll match the new flex that we're using. It's from GeoCell, but the GE stuff would work too. Made a mark down there. We're going to put the silicone on the roof and then put the molding on top. And it's going to be that way all the way down. There's four pieces of trim on the roof. So this will act as uh, adhesive, but it'll also uh, be a good sealant because we'll keep water, even if it gets underneath the molding, from going down through it to the sidewall. Since there's no screws actually holding this thing down, it's all just going to be clamp force from these screws. Well, it's good because uh, that's if there's no screws going down, that means there's no holes going into the roof. Are we ready, Eddie? Eddie? You have a good uh, shadow on the, uh, you're in there. All right, well, it yeah. looks like right to me. That'll ooze out. And then we do a cap molding on top. Go back to our screw bin, a lot to put in. Yeah. There you go. Hopefully it landed on one. Well, we raised it, so we'll see. Nice. I make it in. A lot more to go. Okay, with that, this molding's on. If I just follow this around to where Chad is, he's putting the insert in while we're at here. Careful. It'll be the same thing on the other side. Let's get this thing on the roof. Ooh. She's the easiest to use a bone after you put it one side in. It's even easier if you have a second person pulling it tight for you. Yes. Mm -mm -mm. Look at that. One done. One more to go. Two more. One more side. Three more sides. Four more sides? Sure. Okay. So, almost done. See it oozing out. Now we can just uh, seal over the top and the lap seal is done. If we didn't put that uh, filler strip on the top right here, it would have pulled this molding down and started to crease the uh, the file on pulling it tight. So that's why it was there as a spacer. Feels strong, very strong. Like wool? Very much like a bull. 
So we'll just go ahead and get everything cut down, seal up the roof, put this thing back together. I've done this about 30,000 times, it feels like. No reason to show again. And uh, we'll check back in once the roof's put back together. So we got the edging all the way on. It's sealed underneath, and it's sealed underneath here. The Winnebago has lap sealant right here. We'll be using uh, New Flex 311 on top because it's going to be New Flex 311 everywhere on top. And then on the sides, it'll just be uh, putty, butyl putty, along with uh, clear silicone, 100% silicone sealant on the sides. All right, so I've cut out pretty much all the openings except for the refrigerator vent. So you can still see the steel that we lined up right with that vent that worked out pretty well in fact it was a good guide for my blade when i was cutting out so i was just using a jigsaw on those on the uh ac you can see uh, the frame that we put right there and then on this one back here it's kind of hard to see but it's right there uh, right there now i won't deny there's a little bit of rib showing but I mean, even on a normal roof, that's pretty normal. It's not as pretty as I would have liked, but we're dealing with uh, what we're dealing with. Let me uh, get this put back together. I'm sure it'll look a lot better once everything's on. All right, and I fought the good fight and found the refrigerator vent. Remember, we added a piece of steel right near the middle of it. And uh, now you can kind of see our handiwork after the fact. The good news is that this feels like it's secured really well and uh, I think the foam did a good job adhering so I can't pull it up now if we would have put a thicker deck on it probably would make sense until I kind of show it to you now so you can see there's the substrate and the file on and so any much you raise this up it's gonna raise this trim up and expose more down here and expose more right there on that edge so that's why we didn't want to go too thick. So on this uh, front and rear, this uh, fiberglass is going to wrap around and become the, uh, the front and rear cap. Uh, obviously we cut it the length. I already did that. You can kind of see that. There's some double-sided tape that I'm using to hold this down as I screw in the, the trim over the top of it. This is the trim right up there. Uh, this actually will secure it while I'm putting it in place and act as sealant too. Uh, I just don't want to hide these holes because then I can't find them so easy. So it's obviously a little bit hard to do this one-handed, so I couldn't do that with you guys. But now that I got that screw in, all I'm going to do is pull this down. And it's going to stick right there. And I made marks right here, so I knew where the screw hole was. And that way, when I go to put that down... I just have to line everything up. I want to make sure I'm going into the, the phylon and then into the wall. I just didn't want to uh, only have the trim holding it. I like having the screw going to the phylon too. So you can see the phylon's right behind there. So I'm definitely going to get a bite on that. I won't be able to seal this until after it's painted because the front and rear cap obviously have to be painted to match. Otherwise it might look a little bit weird. Too much going on there. So with the... Uh... That installed, we got our radius, our seamless rear wrap here. I just have to cut it to, to length, otherwise it's gonna be hard to put this trim back on. And I didn't wanna risk it with the router. Okay. One more to go. So that's a... Uh, that's how uh, this back cap's gonna go. The front cap's gonna be identical, just a little bit more awkward because the hood's gonna be in the way. What you doing there, Chad? Making it better. Making it better? You're so good, putting a new gasket on. You're my hero. It's my least, one of my least favorite things to do. Put the gasket's on? Well, because I always find that screw, I always find this these screws right there with my knuckles. I usually find them with the blade. Well, the blade, and then you have to put a blue blade on. You missed having my scraper tool, didn't you? I do. You can get it on Amazon. Send me a link. I need one in my life. <laughs> Every one I've ever bought. Uh -huh. Right? Thing. Like the angle is wrong. Right? Every, all, the angle is completely wrong. Or the uh, the clear uh, handle breaks. I completely understand what you're talking about. That's why I protect that one. Oh, give it to 
me then. Sure is a nice looking seal you got there, Chad. Thank you. You look no touch. All right, so we're gonna be sealing the roof the rest of the way. Uh, I'll be using New Flex 311. This is what the uh, older tubes look like. And now, this is what the newer tubes look like. This is still uh, the same stuff. It just looks completely different. It's a self-leveling RV silicone caulk. So, that's the biggest difference. I would still call this New Flex 311. So, the last little bit we have to do is going to be this uh, roof molding right here. Now, if you remember right, we already sealed underneath it. That's what the silicone coming out is. And, of course, Dicor wouldn't stick to that silicone. That's why we have to still use New Flex. So, we're not doing much more than making flashing to redirect water. The seal is actually underneath it. It's hard to do this one-handed. I did tell you to use the other tubes first. I was already in the machine. What do you want? You gave up on the zigzag pattern. It's always the silliest things that hold us up. We'd be done, but I have to find a refrigerator vent, a base. All right, I'm gonna get that, and then we'll be done for sure. No, that's not true, because we still have to paint it. All right, guys, I really need to get this uh, 2014 Mini Winnie roof job finished up, and uh, let's just go ahead and go over it one more time. If you'll notice, there's a white band right here, because it's gotta be painted. Both the front and rear caps are going to have to be painted. They'll just go up over the top. We won't paint the entire roof. There's no purpose to do that. Uh, for whatever reason, Winnebago likes to use a tan phylon. So there's no loss. It's actually better to have white on the roof for reflective purposes. So let's get up there and take a look at this. Now, I will not deny that this job took a lot longer than I had ever planned on it taking. Uh, this is a 14, this is a two, uh, 2021, so there has been about seven years of deformation in that foam that no matter what we tried, we couldn't get out. Uh, you might see where each rib is, but the most important part is, is it's strong. And I can tell you, it's strong. What I can do is I'll we'll get a, uh, a tripod, we'll set up a tripod and I can see you see me jumping on it. Don't do that. But more importantly, so water's not going down into the AC anymore. Walking on it, it doesn't feel like uh, I'm going to fall through. And it actually turned out a lot cleaner than I think you'd ever know. So I don't think you'd ever know that this was not a factory job. Uh, some of the waviness right up here, there's nothing I could do about. So it's not ideal, but I don't live in a world of ideals, just the best I can do. This is all just uh, that new flex sealant, it's still a little bit fresh. We got the beads all the way down the side, replaced your skylight. I uh, made the executive decision to move the solar panel from over here where we don't have to hide the broken roof anymore to a more central area uh less wire on the roof is better in my opinion keeps it this vent free from uh coverage if they want to put a cover on they'll have room to put a cover on so let's go down inside and we'll take a look on the inside all right so if you guys remember before the ceiling was really quite loose like I could push the ceiling and pull it down and so it's not loose in that sense anymore so I think our glue method worked out pretty well so I feel pretty good about all of that look at that they painted the roof now, I know what you're thinking that looks like the wrong color but that's the color it's supposed to be I mean which color you want to match it's very difficult to know because if we go to the front Sure looks a lot better up there, doesn't it? Let's go up and take a look at it. Well, 
Sure looks pretty good from here. And there's, I guess, the finished job. Now that's definitely been quite the long ordeal on this 2014 uh, Mini Winnie. I uh, did not expect it to take this long or be this involved. Uh, I think we can all thank Winnebago for a brilliant design. Yeah, so if you're buying a Mini Winnie, but uh, that's a long, I want to inspect that roof. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Let's do something else now. What you doing over there, Chad? Now, of course, the last little bit that still has to be done is we still have to put a, uh, a seal cap or a cap seal on the molding here and down here and, of course, all the way down the side. Remember, it didn't have that before. And Well, there she goes.